started my archaeological career um, at the Lark. I, I started working when they first opened in 2002. I was there for three years before that. I worked in insurance. Um, <laughs> there you go. Um, so I don't have an archaeological background. I'm not an archaeologist. Um, and my role is um, chiefly uh, to do with records, but I do obviously get involved with archiving um, finds as well. Um, and we also now have a, a, an office in Northampton which is uh, very ably run by uh, uh, Theodora, who you probably all know, I know she's part of the um, uh, Archaeolog Archaeological Archives group. And uh, so I'm uh, uh, talking from um, both se se uh, centres uh, today. Oh, worked. So um, uh, I'm just going to uh, start off by sort of running through the usual problems. We probably all know them anyway, but uh, I'll just run through them. And then um, my... Uh, ideas that I'd like to uh, see uh, go forward. Um, so archaeology is always, um, archiving is always seen as the end of the process. It's the last thing that gets done. Um, it's always been treated that way. Um, but by the time the archivist gets it, it's been through all sorts of horrors along the way. And we have to tidy up those horrors, make it, make it sensible for it to go into a repository. So we have to do quite a bit of work on this stuff. Um, we, uh, uh, I mean, we all know that the point of doing the dig is to produce uh, uh, a preservation by record. So the records and the objects are why we do it. Otherwise, there is, it really is no point in going digging all this stuff, stuff up if we're, we're not going to do anything with it. So um, I think more thought, we, we need to put more thought into what is, what is going to happen to the archive at the end before we start the project. And um, it, because there is absolutely no point in just putting it away on a shelf somewhere that nobody ever, is ever going to see it again. Um, there are always problems. Um, we've got the usual suspects, uh, money. There's never any money. Um, archiving has always been seen as a bit of an overhead. Nobody ever asked the developer to pay for it. Although they are starting to now, I must admit. They are starting to ask the developer to pay for archiving, although I don't think the developer knows what archiving is. Um, and there's never any time to do it. Um, the arts come in from site. They write their report, they go back out on site again, and everything sits on the shelf there as well. So there's never any time. So there's usual, that, that, they're internal problems that we've got, um, but I'm sure that every uh, unit has the same problem. Um, and therefore, uh, there, there's not enough uh, investment in staff, in archiving staff, people who know what archiving is. I'm sure all our management feel that archiving is getting some records, putting them in a box, getting some fines, putting them in a bag in a box. They don't really understand that you have to cross-reference this stuff, you have to know what it means. It's, it's, it's not just sticking stuff in boxes. You have to be able to, to get something out of it. Um, so uh, investing in um, staff would be really, uh, really useful uh, as well. We often get, um, I, I'm quite good, lucky in that I do have a small team, um, it's not just me. Um, Theodora's on her own, but she, we, we're all expected to rely on um, wounded diggers, as we call them, uh, people who, who can't go out on site because they've hurt their arm or, or whatever, uh, uh, and they come into the office, oh, there you go, you can go into archiving, yeah, they'll help you get rid of this backlog. And, oh, God, you have to, they don't understand. It, it, you have to know what you're doing. You can't just sit the digger down in front of a box of archive material and say to them, can you get that ready for archive, please? They don't understand. They don't, the, the, the records that they produce, they don't really a lot of them aren't that um, experienced to know about post X and what it's all supposed to mean and how it all goes together. I know I'm not an archaeologist, but I've spent the last 13 years learning that and I still don't know everything. And, I don't, and, and, and you have to know what you're doing. You can't just stick, them in front, stick it in front of people who don't know. You have to train people how to do, deal with this stuff. Um, and it doesn't help that if we're working in lots of different areas of the country, you have to know lots of different things. Um, it doesn't happen so much in London. We're, we're quite lucky in a way that most of our stuff goes to London, but we do work in other areas. We work in, in the home counties a lot, and they all have different um, uh, standards. But uh, poor old Theodora, she works in, in loads of different places, and she's got, she has to know 
what they like marked on their pottery in Lincolnshire and what they might want to do in Oxfordshire and what they want to do somewhere else. She has to know all, all these, keep all this stuff in her head. I know it's all written down, but you don't have time to keep, I'll go and look at that lot of standards, I'll go and read that one. And you can't, and again, if she's relying on people coming in from site, they're not going to know, they're not going to have a clue. Um, and we also have to keep huge stocks of different size boxes and uh, for, for different places and uh, uh, the only cost effective way for us to do that is to buy in bulk so we only want 10 boxes but if we're going to make um, not spend millions of pounds on this we have to sort of buy 400 boxes and so we have to then find somewhere to put 400 boxes that we only don't want um, a space race uh, again um, we all know there's no room for, for things um, it's not only the museums that are running out of room we are as well um, we, we don't have anywhere to put all this stuff um, uh, we, it, it's not only held up as well by the fact that the, there's nowhere for the, the stuff to go uh, the, the, having to try and get transfer of title for all this material it's just, oh it's the thing I hate most in the world um, it, it, it's so tedious um, so, so we get stuck with stuff because we can't engage or we try to engage with um, developers or landowners or with landowners we're trying to engage with um, and they're either um, not in the least bit interested or then they suddenly get the lawyers involved or then they ask you how much is it worth, can they sell it, well they were earning you think, oh god, um, it's so tedious um, and uh, uh, the problem we have is the museums like all their boxes, obviously they're all asking for us for these nice um, boxes to fit on their shelves, but we then have to store umpty nine different site boxes on the same shelves that don't fit on our shelves. That, that, oh. So it, it's, a big, it's almost a bigger problem for us trying to store it as it is for the museums. And it's not just the artefacts, it's the records as well. Um, as I said, we, we have to store, um, uh, uh, store these records somewhere um, in, in boxes, uh, we have to make sure uh, uh, that they're uh, in, in a fit state to be archived. We've got to check them all first before we can send them anywhere. Um, and we're, we're, what are we going to do with all this material? If, if somewhere does come, are we going to? We've been storing it for years. They're going to. Uh, we suddenly get. Oh yeah, you can suddenly get giving it to us now, and we're going to charge you uh, fifty quid a box. Hang on a minute. We've, we've been looking after this for the last 15 years and you suddenly want us to pay to give it to you? No, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> sorry. I, I, I was at something, I can't remember what it was, um, and I think it was a guy from Kent County Council, I hope he's not here, um, who, <laughs> who said something like, oh yes, if, well, when we do get suddenly get somewhere, we're going to, uh, the charges, we'll, we'll look at charges, blah, blah, blah. And somebody asked him if it was going to be retrospective and he went, oh yes. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Um, yeah. The other thing is um, technology. Uh, we've been microfilming things for years with the old sort of uh, old-fashioned way, um, and there's never really been any proper guidance from the NMR. I keep asking the NMR, do you still want really, really, really want us to microfilm this stuff? Because nobody looks at microfilm anymore. Um, you can't get the machines to do it, use it. Um, you can't, um, the, the guys who, who actually do the microfilming keep telling me that it's getting more and more expensive to try and get the fish and stuff. So do you really, really, really need it anymore? And and they won't answer me. They just keep saying, oh, we're having a meeting about it, which is nice, but they've been having this meeting for about the last five years and they, they still won't tell me what to do. Um, do they really want to be the host for the security copy anymore? Can't we sort of see the security copy as something digital and look at giving it to somebody like ADS or somebody else or, or, or even still to them but then they set it up as a digital um, uh, resource rather than a microfilm thing. It's just so sort of um, old fashioned. Um, and now we come on to the um, deed of transfer thing. Um, I appreciate that as, as Roy said museums need to have um, title to stuff as part of their accreditation um, uh, but I I just spend so much time especially when you've got something like three little bits of pot and a bit of flint flake and you, you have to spend hours writing letters to people saying saying oh this belongs to you but you really should be depositing it in a museum for somebody can you sign this great big legal document to hand it all over um, 
And that's after spending ages trying to find out who owns it in the first place, because the developer never knows who owns it. They must do, but they just don't want to give, give it away for some reason. They must know whose land they're building on, but they don't like telling you. I don't know why. So you, you have to waste your life trying to find out who owns it in the first place, and then you have to ask it. Fine, it's great for a great big assemblage or a, big, a reasonable size site where it's really important, but why do I have to spend my life asking about these two bits of blooming pottery? Um, I'm not a fine person, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, uh, can we, I mean, just not be a bit more flexible about the, the, the smaller sites? Um, uh, it, it's just really not feasible to keep going that way. Um, and the communication thing again, um, there are all these different bodies. You've got the, the um, local government uh, planning people and uh, the contractors. Um, more than one contractor does exist, but it's one of those you know, things you're covering yourself. Roy and the Ark. <laughs> uh, uh, the repositories, uh, universities, community, and I did forget to put on um, local societies. I should have put local societies in there. They come in there. They're very important as well. We've got all these different bodies, and as I think every, most people have said this morning, we all sort of have our own agendas, and we, we need to get together. We need to be one big body to sort this out. Um, and um, we, we need to act as one so to speak um, and I've been to many of these sort of meetings and seminars and things over the years and we do we do all come up and we have a good old chat and we all say the same thing and we all come up with a yeah let's go and somebody goes off and writes a report that some of us read and some of us don't <laughs> and then we have another meeting and we all do the same thing and and it, it, I just want to do something <laughs> you get so frustrated because you just write reports and don't do anything and and I think we ought to take more time um, yeah time to sort it out at the beginning so we don't spend so <laughs> 10 times the amount of time at the end trying to um, uh, to sort it out at the end we need to start from the very beginning um, and I've got I've had a, a, a good think about this and I've got a few ideas that probably won't go down brilliantly with everybody or they probably won't even work but I want to throw them in there anyway um, I don't know particularly how all the um, processes work so um, one of those reports this is the Southport report um, that came out a, a few years ago and um, I was pointed to this by my boss because she had something to do with it so I thought I'd better mention it um, <laughs> uh, but it did it had some good ideas it came up with um, uh, I didn't read all of it I was only interested in the archive bit um, but it did in that it did advocate a network of um, regional centres sort of uh, uh, linked together to, to you, you can go there and do all your research, your museums can come in and pick, take out what they want to do and put on, on display, community groups can come and use it, uh, you can have uh, events there, you can you know, get some money by having, I know the museum does lots of these, getting these fancy groups in who pay lots of money to have their dinner in, the, in amongst them museum stuff some pots and things that yeah if you want to generate some money do that uh, lots of people love that stuff um <laughs> you've not been to <laughs> no we weren't allowed to but we were the other night we had to go the back way let's go through the plush people <laughs> <laughs> let's go down the fire escape um <laughs> it's horrifying um but it can also they can also act as places um uh, for training I mean, they, they can give advice on archiving to people like the local societies. They can they can train the archivists for the future. They can train the specialists of the future. They're going to have loads of stuff there. They're going to have loads of stuff there that's going to need work done on it, um, because it, it it's not necessarily um, up to the same standard. This way, if it's all in one place and it's all run together and and it's run by the archaeological community, we can take control of it and we can we can dictate what we want we can say right we want this size box we want you to do it this way we want you to give us this data because that way it will inform everybody uh, everybody will be able to use it because it will be the same thing um they oh, oh i know it's gone i'm going the wrong way sorry Bing. there we go um we can try and look for they, the report also recommended we look for some centralized funding from the um, community infrastructure levy um, which uh, I don't know an awful lot about, but it was a governmenty thing that uh, tried to get uh, developers and, and, and people to uh, chip in to their uh, to local uh, uh, the damage they sort of do locally. They can start paying for it a bit more, um, and to get the stuff out there because I think a lot of the problems with people saying oh, it's not relevant 
and, and nobody comes and uses it, it's because nobody knows it's there. And the people who've got it don't know it's there as well. And that's the important thing. We need to we need to get this stuff so it is known. And if it's only one place, it's so much gonna be so much easier to work on. Um, I like this picture. Um, so I think that the important thing is we need to take control of it ourselves. We need to take it away, take the decisions away from the local authorities. Um, as, as a community, as an archaeological community, I don't know how we're going to do this, I haven't figured that one out yet, but as an archaeological community, we need to take control of this. We need to start at the beginning. Um, what I would really like is when the planning condition is um, uh, goes on, that rather than just having a little bit in there that says to the landowner, oh, we, we would like you to um, donate this to a local museum and a repository, and so it makes work. We just tell them that's what we're going to do. And if they don't like it, they can object to it. Um, I think after, if, if it, the way I look at it is that if archaeology wasn't there, if they dug up a few bits of pots and flints and stuff, they'd throw them away. They don't want it. They're not interested in it. Those that are will make an objection and we can deal with those and we can talk to them and we can ease it around and that sort of thing. But the majority of, div uh, of, of people just want to build their housing state. They just want to build their office block. Um, if we want to take this stuff away, then fine. I'm, I'm sure that's what they feel. But once you start giving them a legal document, then they, and they get the lawyers involved, and they start thinking about money, we just have to tell them that the real worth in it is what it is and where it was found. It's not something they can sell. It's not something that they're going to make an asset out of it. I know you get the odd thing, like we have the eagle thing, and they all start making a fuss. But you can talk them round to it, and, and, and talk them round to the fact that it's better off in a museum because what's the, what they're going to do with it. Um, it would so it would be so nice if we could start off at the beginning and, and take control of the whole process by um, uh, by by just owning it if you like just just saying but we, we it, it, this is what we're going to do with it you could, if you don't like that then tell us um, otherwise it's going to go into this repository and it's going to be used by researchers it's going to be used by the local community um, if they want to stick their name on it somewhere then fine they can do you know we can say oh, this was donated by so and so if, you, if they really want to if that would help um, and we could we could give them a sort of time limit yeah if you if you object to it you've got I don't know, 28 days three months however we think is reasonable if we don't hear from you from then by then then we will take it that you're happy for this to happen that would be so much easier for everybody um, and of course what we would really love is that if it did go into a big repository, a big local repository, a, a regional repository or a national repository or where, that everything's done the same. We've, it would just help costs and time so much if we all had the same boxes, the same packaging regime, the same labelling, um, the same uh, De uh, deposition standards for the uh, records as well that we don't have to put accession numbers on everything that if the site code if it's got a site code that'll do as long as you can you can tie it up with something else as long as there is there is some code or number there that ties it with everything else from that site then you don't need half a dozen different numbers um, you can um, if, if so and if we're all doing the same thing I mean, as far as the digital uh, record could go we could either um, uh, use ADS. Uh, we could send the digital material to ADS. Um, I think they. The, I don't know what their new um, system is going to be like, but they would. It would need to be a bit more streamlined for um, uh, our digital data because I don't think it's particularly easy to, to to search or to find what you're looking for at the moment. Um, but. Uh, or, or you could have a, a network of, of regional ADSs so, uh, that go with the repositories. Um, th there are lots of different um, ways we could uh, deal with it. Um, uh, and it will be so much easier for people to find things. I mean, we might, uh, for our um, register finds, we um, photograph them now, rather than doing uh, register find cards, we photograph them. Uh, photograph them all so um, we've got a you, you could put that online so your specialists that are interested in buttons or something they can they can look at all the nice buttons online and say oh yeah I'd like, I want to come in and look at those three or whatever it is and they can be a bit more specific before they get there and have to trawl through all the boxes to find the three buttons they want to look at um, and we could also you know when, when you deposit you could say if there's anything in there you think might be displayable or um, uh, but something that the museums might be interested in put it, putting out there. So you, you could flag that up somewhere. Um, and then the, the information could be sent out to the museums as things are, are deposited. Um, 
we could, uh, yeah, I mean, you can look at charging um, uh, bench fees and things uh, for uh, uh, researchers to come in. We, we started um, charging bench fees. They're not that expensive. But um, it does take time to get things out for people um, to do things. And they can also be, um, you've got a pool of specialists out there. Well, the specialists usually work for the contractors, but they're, they're obviously the um, uh, loan workers as well. Uh, but they're a pool out there. And if, if you know you've got people who are interested in a certain uh, type of object, you can go out there and you can talk to these specialists and they can either come in and help or they can um, uh, uh, offer uh, assistance uh, uh, another way or give them data that they need. But if everything's in one place, everybody knows where to go for it. You know where to ask. Um, and you can also use these places for, train. Uh, as I said before, training. If you've got, uh, if you start up or something somewhere like this and you've got new stuff coming in that's just been dug it all it will be archived up to the new standards and right boxes and everything like that. there are loads of uh, legacy things out there we've all got legacy stuff we've got legacy stuff as contractors museums have got legacy stuff that could also go in there in sort of a different hole and that can be the stuff that's used to train people it can be used for volunteer to try uh, volunteer projects it can slowly start to build up into the right um, uh, type of archive that we can all um, work on and access and the LARC minimum standards project was just such a project and that worked that's worked really well um, where am I going? oh yes now the um, the discarding question sorry um, If we have everything together, you get a better idea of what there is. Um, we can, we, you would have the specialists there who will be able to comment on what is there and what, what they think should be done. I mean, I, I too have spoken to lots of specialists who say about, oh, in 10 years time, there might be some wonderful method of finding this out about something. Well, perhaps we should look at it from the way they do with sort of records management where you keep stuff for a certain amount of years and then you decide whether it's still worth keeping it or not and then you either discard of it, discard it, get rid of it, do whatever or you keep it for another 10 years and then review it again. Perhaps we could look at it in that way. And the the idea of discarding it, I agree, you shouldn't really say discard, we should say, <laughs> but um, we don't particularly want to throw it away. So what else can we do with it? Um, other collections might want it universities we don't get we get a lot of um, university students who are doing their um, dissertations whatever who say to us oh we want we want to come and um, we want your some of your data or we want to come and look at um, uh, your uh, material but they don't understand how much work that involves it's not just them coming down and then magically these, the right boxes appear we have to go and find the material that they want we have to go uh, we have to consult databases and pull out all the information to then go but they don't want to do that they want so if it was all in one place in one big place we could just set them onto it and they could do it themselves which would save a lot of our time as contractors and the museum's time um, and we can look at um, what else we can do with this material we could offer it to universities uh, or, or teaching collections, people who, who would use it to teach other people. Um, we could use uh, use it for um, the usual handy collections. I also help run a young archaeologist club and I'd love to have uh, my hands on some of this stuff um, that I know I've archived like three bits of pot and everyone's going, oh, bore of three bits of pot. I, I love it. No, <laughs> I love it for the kids. They'd love it. Um, and, and local museums will be able to access it without having to worry about storing it. It will be there just it will be there for them just the same. It's just that they don't have to worry about where they're going to put it every five minutes and if they if whether they're going to understand it. Um, so I'm back to the beginning again, but I don't want this to be the end. I don't this time I don't want us to go away and somebody writes another paper and nothing happens. I want us really to, to, to start talking about it and get things moving. It would be lovely if um, you know if people want to make comments and things or, or tell me that um, they violently disagree with me or they happily disagree or they happily agree with me. I don't know or they've got better ideas or other ideas. I think it's time we started 
putting the ideas out there rather than just waiting for somebody else to do it, somebody else to write a report that we probably won't read and have another meeting next year. Thank you.